What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video. Please don't let the thumbnail for this video scare you. It looks bad, but this is actually going to be a pretty positive video because I think uh, what the premise of this video is going to be is that this recession is going to be a little bit easier to handle uh, than the Great Recession of 2007 and 2008. And I have some recent articles that kind of support that. Before I dig in any further, let me say thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys allow this kind of stuff to happen. These kind of videos that are a little bit more different, a, a little, a little bit different than the usual video about Star Wars collecting. Um, I think that it's important to kind of mix things up a little bit, so to speak. And my Patreon supporters allow this kind of stuff to happen. So thank you all to that. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, it's patreon.com slash action figure grader and I you know for those of you newer newer to the channel you may not know this but I used to be in finance I used to be an investment banker and uh, I, I took companies public I did debt offerings private placements mergers and acquisitions I did that for four years I worked long hours 100 hour plus weeks one time I worked 54 hours straight without sleeping because I was doing this stuff and I'm also in real estate now I've been doing real estate for about 18 years so I, I more so maybe than the average collector, I, I do have a little bit of a background in finance and uh, and obviously in real estate. And uh, these personal finance type questions I've been getting a lot more of either publicly or privately through private message. And where appropriate, I think it's important to kind of talk, talk about this stuff. So I think that this recession is a much different animal than the shock to the system type of recession that we saw in the Great Recession. Uh, banks were failing back then. Uh, it was much more sudden, and this one is a little bit more of a creep, right? We can kind of see the writing on the wall that, in my opinion, shows that there's a recession coming and how to prepare for it, what, what's the market going to do, what's the real estate and the housing market going to do, all that kind of stuff I want to touch on, and I'm not saying I'm right. There's a high chance that I'm wrong on some of this stuff. And so take my take my advice or my thoughts with a grain of salt, but I, think, I just think it's fun to talk about, and as you're watching the video, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Please like the video if you enjoyed it as well. So let's dig into some recent articles that I found, and you guys can, uh, you know, chime chime in as you as you see fit. But uh, this article says the odds of a U.S. economy sliding into recession next year, quote unquote, jumps to 40 percent, says Bank of America. So this is actually up from their previous forecast, and in my opinion, 40 percent chance of a recession is way too low. Way too low. I think it's it's more like 80 percent or 90 percent. But uh, you know, and again, I'm not saying I know more than the analysts at Bank of America. They they do it on a full time basis. They probably know more than I do. But that's what they're saying. Uh, they're saying that the risk is there. Uh, they say our worst fears around the Fed have been confirmed. They fell well behind the curve and are now playing a dangerous game of catch up. Well, you know, I have a I had a video that I made back in June of last year, so about a year ago, where I said that the Fed was not acting soon enough and that they needed to raise rates now. And they didn't. And as a result, now they're doing much more sudden jumps. They they just announced recently the three three quarters of a point jump in the federal funds rate. And obviously that trickles down into the cost of capital for everything from home loans to uh, credit card debt to student loans to car debt, you know, anything, you name it. When the Fed changes the federal funds rate, it changes the cost of capital for everything and can cause a halt on the economy and, and inflation, ideally, is what the Fed's trying to do. But they're trying to do a soft landing. They're trying to engineer uh, a landing where there is lower inflation <clears throat> without slipping the economy into a recession. And in my opinion, it's much too late for that. I think that they're going to have to have a recession in order to get this inflation under control. Uh, this is the first time they've raised the federal funds rate by a 75 basis point increase since 1994. So it's been a long time since they've done that. Uh, so right now the target is 1.5 to 1.75 percent. That is going to change dramatically uh, and they're expecting it to, to increase to as high as 3.4 percent by the end of 2022. So think about that. We're at, right now we're at about 1.75%. They're talking about 3.4% by the end of the year, uh, which is only six months away. <clears throat> and can they do that without affecting employment rates? Who knows? But mortgage rates have jumped from about 3% at the beginning of the year to now over 6%. And it has put a halt on the housing market. It's really slowed things down. And uh, so there we are. And 
you know, everyone's playing Monday morning quarterback, right? They're, they're all saying the Fed should have seen this coming. Well, these guys were not saying that back then, right? It's easy to say it now, but the Fed had a very difficult job of trying to control inflation and uh, everything is hindsight's 2020. It'd be different if they had it on video like I do showing that, yes, you guys need to be raising rates right now. Um, but these guys are saying it after the fact and it's, you know, everything's hunky dory with stock market going up and housing prices going up. Nobody was, was willing to say it then. And I, I think that that's important. The other big important factor is that the Fed itself says that inflation will not be under control for another two years. The, the Cleveland Federal Reserve Bank president, Loretta Mester, said she expects inflation to still be a problem, not only the rest of this year, not only all of next year, 2023, but into 2024. So how can you engineer a soft landing when you have inflation that they expect, even with these expected rate hikes by the Fed now, uh, to... to not cause a recession and uh, inflation she's expecting to move down gradually but here's but here's the confounding thing she says that she is not predict predicting a recession right now despite the slowing growth and i don't know how you can i don't know how you can reconcile the two concepts right we've already had one quarter q1 of this year already had negative growth and uh, a recession as i've talked about is defined by two consecutive quarters of negative growth I think there's a high likelihood that we see Q2 have negative growth. So how can you not say that a recession uh, can be avoided? Uh, you know, how can you say that a recession is 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 unavoidable uh, versus avoidable? And I, I, you know, to me, it just doesn't reconcile the two concepts when you know that uh, they're going to be raising rates and that you know that the Fed itself thinks that inflation is going to be a problem for the next two years. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, and I think that they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. You need to plan for a recession now, and I, that's just that's just where I think it's going. Um, and again, going back to the Monday morning quarterback concept, and you know hindsight's twenty twenty. Here are three things the Fed has done wrong, and what it still isn't getting right. And essentially, the complaints center on three themes for actions past, present, and future. The Fed didn't act quickly enough to tame inflation, which I agree with. But again, they're they're talking about it after the fact. Uh, it isn't acting aggressively enough now, even with the series of rate increases. I'm not sure if that's really true either, because uh, you know we just had this three quarters of a point rate hike, which is the first and highest for a three, in, you know, for a rate hike in one sitting by the Fed since 1994. So they're doing what they can. They can't. They can only shock the system, but so much. Finally, uh, it should have been better at seeing the current crisis coming. That I 100% agree with because uh, this, this, the writing was on the wall that inflation was going to get out of control post-lockdown. There was too much pent-up demand. Uh, there was too much liquidity and cash reserves in the market, not only with banks, but personal finance. As we talked about in past videos, the savings rate for the average U.S. consumer hit a high of 25% of GDP uh, back in during the lockdown era of 2021. And so... That, what does that mean? That means that there was so much cash just being socked away. And now that cash is being dwindled down by consumers as they raid their savings accounts to pay for these higher cost of goods. And everything from, as we've talked about, gas to groceries to rent is all going up. And so, you know, again, I think this article is a little bit of hindsight. It's 2020. And uh, we're already there now. All right. So there's no point in, in complaining about what the Fed hasn't done or didn't do in time, uh, or what they're not doing now. Uh, what, what they need to do is engineer a way to get inflation under control without destroying the economy. And it is gonna be a softer landing. But here's why I think that it is gonna be a softer landing than the 08 recession. Is it gonna be a recession? Yes. Is it going to be painful? Yes. Is it going to be as bad as 2007 and 2008? I don't think so. And the big reason why I think is housing. Uh, if you look at some of these housing statistics, this is a really good article. And again, as always, I'll put links to all of these articles in the video description. But this article really touches on some really great information. And uh, all of this has people asking, is today's housing market the same predicament that it was in, in 2007 and 2008 during the Great Recession crash? And it's not because uh, homeowners today are in a much healthier financial position than they were during 07 and 08. 
Uh, back then, people were buying houses with 0% down. They were doing a lot of adjustable rate mortgages versus fixed 30-year mortgages where your monthly payments will not change. Uh, so it's, it's a lot different. The average borrower had a credit score of 751 now versus about 700 in 2010, two, thousand, two years after the financial meltdown. Uh, lenders are a lot more strict these days. Banks balance sheets are way, way better. They don't have nearly as much exposure to mortgage-backed securities like they did back in 2007 and 2008 that caused the government to have to do bailouts or to let banks fail like Lehman Brothers, uh, like Bear Stearns. Uh, lots of banks failed because they just had way too much exposure to these mortgage-backed securities and those mortgages that underlie those securities uh, were were inferior loans, uh, really low low quality, high risk loans to individuals that had no business buying a home. I think that's a lot different today. The other big thing is tappable equity. And uh, you know, as, as consumers raid their savings accounts right now to help pay for higher grocery bills and, and gas costs, uh, the average consumer now has way more equity in their house because prices have gone up. And they, they also put down a lot more money. At, you know, they're putting down 20% now uh, versus 0% down for back in 07 or 08. And, you know, so right now, the, the, the equity on paper right now for in terms of homeowners values of homes is about $11 trillion in the U.S. alone. That is a 34% increase over the last year. Now, are housing prices going to go down during this recession? Yes. And that's one of my pieces of advice right now. If you're, in a if you're watching this video and you're in a position where you're tapping your savings to pay for grocery bills and, and you're a little bit worried about where things are and where things could go with your job, you need to go ahead and set up a home equity line of credit now. You don't necessarily need to tap that home line of credit right now. Because if this recession does linger on for a year or two, it's nice to have that equity line in place where you can pull off of the value of your, of the current value of your home. So even if the home decreases in value during the recession, you've already got the home equity line of credit set up on the old value. So I would recommend you do that if you're not in a good financial position right now and you need to have money available in the event it's it's needed. Uh, again, you don't need to use it. You don't need to use it, but you can set it up and have that money ready to go. It's a revolving credit line, just like anything else. And you can always tap it later uh, should you find yourself in a dire financial situation. So that, that's a big thing to, to think about. Total mortgage debt in the United States is now less than 43% of current home values the lowest on record. So again, people right now who are homeowners, they have way more equity in their house than any time on the, in the history of the US since this data has been compiled. And again, that means you should set up a home equity line of credit uh, if you need it. And again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one to advocate for borrowing uh, or to adding more debt. It's about setting up that line of credit. I'm not saying tap it unless you absolutely have to, but uh, that's, it's really interesting. Uh, just two and a half percent of borrowers have less than 10% of equity in their homes. Now, if you compare that back to the Great Recession, it was a much higher percentage, much higher. I would say it's more like 40% back during the 08 recession. So that's why I think the housing market, while uh, it, it's up and it's way too hot and uh, the Fed's actions lately are slowing things down, it's also a, a big asset uh, to get us through this recession. So. It, it provides a huge financial cushion should home equity prices actually fall. And I think that people who, uh, you know, again, who, who need the money or might need the money, or if you think you have a chance of losing your job, set it up now. Set it up now while the price of that home is, is worth more than, well, than it, where it could be a year from now or two years from now. There's only two and a half million adjustable rate mortgages right now, uh, or about 8% of active mortgages. That's the lowest on record. And again, it's, it's really nice to have a fixed 30-year mortgage and um, rates have gone up so much to where it's gonna be hard to refinance into a 30-year mortgage. But uh, it's just something to think about if, if you are uh, at risk right now. Just before the housing market crash, there were 13.1 million adjustable rate mortgages representing 36% of all mortgages. And so that was my estimate a little bit that I just gave you a little bit earlier. I said about 40%. I didn't read this article yet uh, all the way at the bottom, but 36% is what the actual number was versus 2.5% today. So the housing market is much healthier. Banks are much healthier. And that's why I think that this recession, if and when it does happen, is going to be much easier to handle and uh, not nearly as stressful 
uh, on the U.S. economy as as that Great Recession was. So it's, it's, there's a lot of other really good data in here, and I would encur encourage you to take a look at it. Mortgage delinquencies are now at a record low. Well, why is that? It's because the unemployment rate's so low, right? That's that's the big bellwether right now in our economy. We might have a recession, but unemployment is still very, very low right now. And I don't think that that's a good measure for how healthy the economy is. But at the end of the day, if you're a, if you're a homeowner and you have a job and you can pay your mortgage, that's good. That's good. I know that I went through some very, very lean years back in um, back during the 07, 08 recession and the fallout from that. You know, being in real estate. Uh, I'm self-employed, and my income got cut by about 75%. But I was living on about 40 grand a year, and I still managed to save some money. And that's why the next statistic I'm getting ready to show you is so terrifying to me. 36% of people in the U.S. who make $100,000 or more are living paycheck to paycheck right now. Think about that. You're making a hundred grand a year, and you're only and you're living paycheck to paycheck. That's thirty six percent of them. How is that possible? How is that possible? You're, you're spending beyond your. I'm not saying you guys. I'm saying these thirty six percent of of high earners are living beyond their means, and uh, maybe they have too much house and they need to downsize. Uh, maybe they're just spending it frivolously. I don't know. Maybe you're buying little dolls like the ones that are behind me. But for me. I, I was making about 40 grand a year for about two or three years after the recession. And even making that much money, I lived lean. I ate very, very leanly. I, it was pre-kids, admittedly. Uh, but I, I think that if you're making $100,000 a year, there is no reason at all that you should not at least be saving 10% of your income, at least. And, uh, I, and I think that people need to, to set a budget. You know, It's just crazy to me that 36% of people making 100 k are living paycheck to paycheck. There's no excuse for it. And it's a sign, in my opinion, of the excess that Amer a lot of Americans are living on right now. And uh, that I hope that, that they don't wait to kind of reevaluate their finances. Uh, but that's, that's a scary number. And if you're in that number, this is not me criticizing you. This is just a wake up call, in my opinion, that uh, that people need to kind of reevaluate their finances and, and decide what are necessities and decide what are optional discretionary type purchases like the ones behind me. Uh, I can tell you that if, if I was in that 36% and I was still buying action figures, I would shake my head. I would shake my head over and over at myself in the mirror because you should not be buying action figures or any kind of collectible if you're not saving anything right now after making $100,000. Now let's talk about the market. The other common comment I've gotten from you guys, either privately or publicly, is that hey, you know, now's maybe a good time, a good buying opportunity. Well, let's go quickly back to this. Um, the Fed saying that they are uh, are not predicting a recession despite slowing growth right now. And so if you believe, if, if you as an investor believe this information, right, if you actually believe this is the case, then maybe it is a buying opportunity. Here's the, I'm just pulling up a, a general indices. Obviously, individual stocks will have, you know, will vary. And, uh, but I'm talking about just broadly the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Here's where we are right now, roughly. We're at about 29,889. And if you look at this yellow line, uh, the last time, we got about this low was towards the end of 2021 in December. So we really haven't fallen that far yet. And my argument is if the market is still not pricing in a recession yet, which I would argue is the case, we got further to fall, folks. We got further to fall. So uh, now, am I fully invested in stocks and bonds and things like that? Pretty much, pretty much. I do have a cash balance, obviously, as I've told you guys. And it's because my outlook at 45 years old is a lot different than if I'm at 75 years old. If I'm at 75 years old, I would not be investing in stocks right now because I think that we got further to fall. I think a more realistic price point is probably back in here, back in the 2018, 2019 range right in here, uh, which puts us at about 26,000. So uh, that, that's another 10% minimum. I think the market could fall before we see it, uh, quote unquote, near-term bottom in stocks. Now, again, this is a broad indices and, and every stock can be different, right? If you buy IBM, that might have a different bottom, you know, it might have a different percentage bottom. But I, I think that to say that stocks are cheap right now is a fallacy because I don't, I'm not sure if the market is really uh, pricing in right now a full recession because of what the Fed is saying and because of what the White House is saying. They're trying to calm fears right now. And how do you calm fears? By saying there's not gonna be a recession. Well, folks, everything else shows that there's going to be a recession. We had an inverted yield curve for a little while. 
Uh, we might still have one. I haven't checked it lately. Anytime there's been an inverted yield curve in the history of the U.S., just about every time, there's been a recession shortly thereafter. There was an inverted yield curve about a month ago. And what does that mean? An inverted yield curve means that short-term interest rates were higher than long-term rates, right? If you're taking a long-term loan, that's riskier than a short-term loan. It should have a higher interest rate. When it inverts like that, that's a bad sign that the market is going to have a recession. And I would argue that stocks have still not fully priced that in. So take that for what you will and also factor in your age, right? If you're 70 or 75 and you're watching this video, I would dial it back on the stock market. I would dial it back. I would get to a low risk portfolio for your investments because I still think we're going to see a, a, a fall in, in the stock market personally. Finally, I want to talk about Bitcoin. If you're investing in Bitcoin, God bless you. 53% of investors, apparently, based on uh, a survey, are invested in Bitcoin. And of those 53%, 46% of them were within the last year. Look what Bitcoin has done since it hit its high of 64,000. It's now at 20,000. That means that it's been cut by about 66% in value and trillions of dollars are going to be wiped off the face of the earth because of Bitcoin. So uh, my other caution is in a recessionary environment, whatever you consider high risk investments, I, which I consider Bitcoin to be due to the lack of regulation, you might want to dial it back. You might want to dial it back because I, there's a very good chance that it could hit some of these further uh, targets from back in 2019 to 2020, which is closer to about half of where it is right now. Now, I'm not saying or know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. I don't follow that market. There was no way I'm going to invest in Bitcoin. I invest in hard assets like real estate, rental properties, the stuff behind me, stocks and bonds, because that's a regulated market. It's got the SEC behind it. Uh, Bitcoin is not quite as well regulated. There's a lot of startup Bitcoin copycats. Uh, and I, I just think that with Bitcoin, Bitcoin's the blue chip of, 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 of cryptocurrency. And you can already see you know, if the if the blue chip of cryptocurrency can have its value cut by 66 percent in, you know, six, six to eight months, it tells you it's a high risk investment. It's, it's highly volatile. And, uh, you know, I think if you're heavily invested in Bitcoin, I think it's a mistake right now because uh, the market is a very precarious time. And I, I, me personally, there's no way I'd stay invested in Bitcoin if I had any right now. I, I will never own Bitcoin. You can put that down right now. I will never own Bitcoin unless the U.S. dollar gets set on fire. I just I don't trust it, and I think it's too volatile. Um, anyway, that's all I really had. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know that some of you guys may disagree with this. Some of you may agree, and I'd, I'd appreciate your comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.